Hello and thanks for joining us at interest.co.nz. I'm Janae Tibshirani and today I'm joined by the Deputy Reserve Bank Governor, Jeff Baskand. Hi Jeff. Greetings. The Reserve Bank has announced that it would like to remove loan to value um, ratio restrictions. So this means that it would like to take away the um, restrictions that it put in place in 2013 that restricts banks lending to people who would like to buy residential property. So um, currently there are a couple of different rules, but basically it means that owner occupiers generally need to have a 20% deposit and investors, most of them need to have a 30% deposit. The Reserve Bank would now like to take these rules away. Jeff, could you please just explain the rationale behind this? Well, let me just stress at the start, we're consulting. So it's a proposal that we've made and, and we welcome feedback on it. But uh, the background, of course, is that these restrictions were put in place when uh, we had a, a strong credit uh, cycle going on, when the, the housing market was, was booming and banks were lending uh, quite high rates to, to households with um, not much uh, equity uh, in their, their properties. And we were always a bit worried about uh, the risks of, of that sort of endangering uh, the banks if, if that kept going at a, at a frantic rate like it was. So uh, that's the nature of macro prudential policy. It's to lean against sort of excessive credit cycles. Well, we don't have an excessive credit cycle right now. We've, we've really got the opposite. We've got the risk that the economy is is seriously uh, in, a, in a severe downturn. Credit growth will be slowing. Um, and, and so it's a time when, when you don't really need those macro prudential um, policies. They're always supposed to be a temporary policy. So what we're proposing to do is take them off for, for 12 months and, and then decide what we do at the end of that. Uh, Jeff, some people might argue that these rules have actually served us quite well because New Zealand's household debt is already um, high because you know house prices have been so high. And actually, um, there's an argument that banks needed these rules to sort of rein them in a bit and um, keep our financial system safe. Why um, take that away? Well, we would very much agree with, with uh, the proposition you just made. We think that they've been very beneficial. Uh, they have reduced the risk in the financial system. That meant that instead of having you know over 20% of, of banks' loans at, at what we would call a high-risk category, we're down to around 8 to 10% of loans in, in that in that category. So yes, they have they have been successful, but that doesn't mean they have to be there at all all times. Um, I mean, we haven't made a permanent decision about this. What we're saying is we don't need them leaning against excessive credit growth right now. So uh, in fact, they could actually have some perverse impacts if we kept them on. We, we want banks to be able to make, uh, to lend to households to defer mortgage uh, payments, to let households, if they need to, to borrow a bit more to see their way through uh, the current uh, cycle. And, and these uh, restrictions could have got in the way of that. So we're just really softening, uh, helping banks to soften the, the blow to the economy in the short term by doing this. And, and we're not really at risk of, of rampant credit growth. Okay, and actually that was the last question, which does sort of contradict the previous questions a little bit. But the, the thought that I really had was that banks haven't um, in recent times been lending up to their maximums under the LVR rules. So even if you took the rules away, um, would that even have much of an effect at all? I imagine banks would just continue being pretty um, prudent. So if I wanted a mortgage, for example, they might look look at me and say, okay, you have a job now. Will you have a job next year? And um and, and, and be a bit tougher that way? I think that's uh, probably the more likely uh, risk that we've got, actually, is that they will be over-prudent. Um, you, know, you can say that's not the worst outcome from the banking system's point of view. They, they will be cautious, but, um, but certainly, you know, uh, we, we want them to, to make good decisions where we can about the, uh, the the ability of people to, to pay loans back, uh, businesses and households. Um, you need good credit assessment by banks and, and hopefully they'll do that very responsibly. This, this gets out of the way of a few perverse examples where for some small banks, uh, a few uh, households, if they were deferring payments, they might have tipped over the, the 80% um, 
uh, LVR restriction, they might have suddenly found it with, uh, they were at 82 or 85 percent and, and the banks might have, have got into breach of, of our rules. That, that would be undesirable for, for just a, the temporary uh, reasons. And so, you know, in one sense, we're just getting out of the way, but we don't expect it to, to lead to excessive risk taking. Okay, uh, I know it's early days, uh, Jeff, but do you have a sense of the portion of um, mortgage holders who might be tipping over that 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 line at the moment, as, as you just said? I don't think there are many in that circumstance, but, but, but a small bank uh, with not too many high OVR loans, that um, they, they might not need many just to, to breach the, the requirements. So... Um, so yeah, that, that would be just an unintended consequence and we just want to avoid those things. I think we are seeing lots of households seeking or inquiring about deferring their loans. Uh, I, I really don't have data on, on exactly uh, what their LVRs are, but, um, but certainly the interest in deferral is because of, of loss of income. In terms of the LVRs, are you, how open are you to just loosening them as opposed to scrapping them? Or do you think it won't really make a difference? We came to a conclusion as we were doing this work that we thought just a loosening really was was not going to make much difference and it was might as well just remove them for um, for 12 months. We can come back to it and look at uh, whether we need to reintroduce them at that time or keep them still um, uh, suspended. But uh, you know the way that our rules have operated is we've always allowed a few loans through um, on the what we call the speed limit test. So they could let some through. Um, we could have increased that speed limit, but you'd have to increase the speed limit quite a lot to avoid you know, the, the problems we were trying to avoid. And then you think, what's the point of, you know, of having a, a very high speed limit? You might as well just remove it really. So yeah, it seems the simplest thing to do in the meantime. Jeff, some first home buyers might be looking at this announcement thinking, oh, this is great. Um, this might help me uh, make it a bit easier for me to, to get on the property ladder. But on the flip side, if it's easier for first home buyers, it's also easier for investors. Um, you know, are, are you at all worried that first home buyers will once again be a bit left behind as investors are the ones who, who scramble right into the market and try and snatch up some good deals? Well, I think the big picture in the current circumstances, we'd be surprised if anybody was really looking very aggressively at, at buying um, a lot of houses or, or, or moving way up the, um, to use all the 100% uh, that they potentially could in terms of borrowing. Um, we think banks will be cautious. We think households in general will be a bit cautious because house prices are more likely to decline than, than to, to rise uh, solidly in this environment. And that probably also deters investors. It's um, not such a good, good time to invest if you think yeah, the uh, asset price is going to decline. So, look, uh, there could be a few people in those circumstances. You know, whenever you do something, you, you, you can't guarantee that it won't have any uh, unintended effect on, on the odd case, but I think the the, the dominant force here will be uh, um, seeing the um, the housing market soften. How do you know about um, New Zealand's exposure to um, mortgage debt? I mean, the value of our housing stock is worth, last I checked, $1.2 trillion. I mean, that is a huge amount. Our GDP uh, for a year before this uh, crisis was about 310 billion. So we're talking 1.2 trillion versus 310 billion. Um, I mean, how, how vulnerable are we? How nervous are you at the moment? Well, as I said, I think that we started this um, into this uh, uh, recession that we're, we're having um, with uh, the banks in good stead. But but what we've, we've always been cautious about amount of household debt. There is a lot of household debt out there. It's also quite concentrated. Um, you know, uh, a uh, number of households have a lot of debt and they are very exposed, uh, if, uh, particularly if they lose their jobs. Um, you can get house price falls, but if you don't have to sell your house, you can probably ride that out for a while. But if you, um, if you lose your job, uh, then paying your mortgage, um, it becomes a problem. So, you know, the, we, 
brought this policy in to avoid those risks getting worse. And, and as mentioned earlier, we think those risks have subsided. They've, they've, we've improved the, the stability of the system over time. It, it's safer than it was. But I'm not, um, I'm not so uh, optimistic or delusional as to think there aren't risks there. There still are risks there if, if this becomes a long-term protracted uh, downturn. And, and, and that, that's, a, that's a scenario that's um, not implausible. And uh, so, you know, all the time we're looking ahead and thinking, where will we be in 12 months, 18 months? Right now, we're fine, you know, in terms of the banking system. But I, I, I obviously worry about, you know, those tail risks of, of how bad it could be in, in two years' time.